this is my uh, title I, I'm going to talk about. Our courses from two universities, uh, Hai and uh, Larry from University of Minnesota, USA, and uh, others, including me, and Shi uh, Tao, Jiang Ying, and uh, Xing Gong from Nanjing Normal University, China. Uh, my talk targets the issue of hypothesis of bipolar seesaw problem. This is a uh, current interest uh, problem. The initial idea was launched uh, by Crowley and uh, Stock in 1992, and Worry Brooke termed that the bipolar seesaw. This conceptual motivated intensive research by comparisons of ice core and marine sediments, as well as model simulations like here, here and the two models. But the interface relation can't be structured, locked, because of dating uncertainty. So here, I try to use the Mansung record, derived from the cave records, to trace the phase relation between two hemispheres based on the, its large circulations and uh, its inherited link to Nansen atmospheric Nansen record. So we selected the key of studies on these caves. Uh, this is uh, old data from Hulu Cave and San Paul Cave published last year, and the Yongxin Cave. We also extend our investigation on Qingtian Cave, used very near the Sanbao Cave, and used the data Hesang Cave, and further the Donggo Cave. And now, uh, in recent two years, we investigation on caves on the southwest of China, such like Tashibao Cave, and uh, Ulu Cave, another cave, good cave. So we use this data to investigate monsoons. Why? Because these cave relations was uh, strongly influenced by the summer monsoon circulations with the characteristic features. One, summer monsoon precipitation is a large proportion of the rainfall, real rainfall. Second, the seasonal difference of rainfall that are 018 are essential sim similar for these curve locations. So with these two features, we could explain it, observe the cave data. This is a picture of the Hulu cave. You can see two person stand here. <laughs> this is an old man, one male, another is a young man. So Hulu became famous not because it's high quality stand spilling, only because it's two forces of Homo erects founded in 1991, 1992. As this is old data from Hulu K. We extend the 80 uh, uh, wind sample to the to 20, uh, 24,000 years uh, high resolution data. And we are duplicated with uh, another data uh, called uh, PMSD. And so this is the older data. We use the other cave data to improve this. This is from Yongxin Cave. Uh, this is cave is, appears very close to the system because this has two entries. One is a big one. And the second, here, the very small entrance, arrows only one person climbs, climbs to in two. So it's, this is very hard work into, in this cave. We use three, these three static maps 
to establish another high resolution cave data for the last glacial period. This is one stalagmite data. And uh, second, the controlled by many good uh, uh, dates. And the other one, you can see very duplication test exist between the data, different uh, stalagmites. If you compare it with the Hulu data, you can see the very similar figure general pattern and including timing of events and similar relative amplitude, although it's absolute, absolute, absolutely that are all in is different. Uh, this is a sample cave picture. You can see very big, very big stalagmite. If higher than one meters, we are covered 100,000 years uh, uh, continuous. So we can use these several stalagmites higher than one meters can get construct high resolution data back to, to 600,000 years ago. Here we use several horizon data, horizon stalagmite to, to test the fertility of the climate change. This is data from, new data from Sabao Cave. Uh, this is the first one. And uh, second, third, fourth. When compared with Donga Cave, you can see very different, replicated with the Sabao Cave. And also duplicated with the Hezang Cave data. But uh, you can find uh, some difference some of the difference can, could be expanded by, expand by the dating uncertainty, but some are not, because the particular for high frequency signal like here, probably due to the water reservoir, different size of the water reservoir overlying the cave's top, top of the cave. Uh, we also to hope to see what is the real picture of the Monsoon, East Asia Monsoon, particularly on this period, because this is very high intensity of Monsoon. We use another cave about 1,000 years, uh, about 1,000 kilometers from Hulu. You can see very duplicated with the original glue data. Also, we can use this same uh, stalag uh, <coughs> several some other stalagmite to test its reality. This is a one <coughs> stalagmite called YT with a very good annual lamination. So this is very good du duplication. Another one here, 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 yeah. And we also use uh, a <coughs> Qingding cave to test the YD events, around the YD events here, and then, very good. So, <coughs> we can piece together this cave data into one time se series, like here, here. When compared with, with the ice core, we can see some difference in timing of the events. You can see the GICC 05 is very good in typing with the cave data. But two other versions of the GISP2 and North Creek SS05C time scale show a little different for the older portion, like here show. <coughs> so we can see <coughs> that the cave dated chronology, either a ice core age model has its own disadvantage and advantage. We, they are together, can be used as a benchmark to calculating and calib calibrating the time scale of at the northern hemisphere. 
So we can use this uh, one times this shoe here, time series, to summarize the character of the initial monsoon changes on orbital and uh, millennial time scales. The first, the monsoon follows in so, uh, precessional cycles of July insulation without any phase lag. Second, we can see a large too large interval of a weak monsoon stage. This is probably related to ice sheet dampening effects. Second, we can see the Heinrich type events are very similar in duration and structure for monsoon, like here shoe. And thirdly, the strong monsoon events, uh, like DO events, is not so pronounced as a weak monsoon events. For example, 10 day, number 21 actually follows the insulation change, or on the baseline of the insulation. And in addition, we can see an exceptional high monsoon intensity occurred at the minimum of insulation. So it's not so curious when we see this monsoon in intensity rebounded, rebounded. It's normal. Next question is we, how do we know the synchronous change between Greenland temperature and monsoon intensity? Because it's dating uncertainty is large. We can see this very, very short time scale could be linked together. And the second, Double peaks and further three peaks. So the two records are strongly correlated on short, very short time scale. We can see they are strongly correlated, and a synchronous change should be inferred from this correlation. Okay. So we can see more details, but but. For monsoon, it takes a long time, long time to complete these transitions. And we use the Greenland dust peaks. You can see strongly a correlation between two. But we didn't find any significant dust peak during the minister interval. This is really a ministry story. If the dust peak sort of the originate, originates from the desert dry lands of the East Asia. So the question is, is this, if exact, exactly similar between monsoon events and uh, clean air temperature? We use this annually, annual bands to test this. Yes, no. We didn't find exactly similar because this monsoon monsoon it takes a long time to transition into windy events. But Greenland short about 200 years. Further, we use this stalagmite covers 5,000 years continuously, and also see the difference between Greenland and monsoon transitions. For monsoon, it also takes. 100 years more to complete it transition. So this is what I don't like. Particularly important is we can use the spike of the discrete you know, very on short time scale events to place, to determine the exact relation between the monsoon events and the Dense guard Oceanic events between Atacalina. Thus, if we can do the 
we can explore, we can make understand, more better understand of the forcing mechanism. And finally, we can see the Antarctic temperature inversely correlated to monsoon events. If we move the ED3 time scale back to back to by 500 years, which is insist, uh, <coughs> agree we are with uh, GICC 05 five time scale. What we can find is they are strongly related with the yellow bar, particularly for transition from boring upload and warm period into YD events. It takes a long time for about one or two hundred years more than Glenna. But for between Antarctic temperature and monsoon, it takes similar long transition. And also for boring upload and durations and this and a similar uh, this transition, particularly for these time periods, they are linked together very closely. But we didn't find this counterpart. Why? I don't know. Possible due to this, this weak signal, to be too weak to trans transmit everywhere. So this is my talk. Finally conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you for the challenge at all. The, the question is, uh, I think the, in the audience should be some question. My question is, what is your conclusion? <laughs> you see, uh, is, uh, so you, 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 do you mean that South, uh, East Asia monsoon is more similar to the Antarctic rather than Greenland? Exactly. Huh. Exactly. Yeah, any question? Yeah, please. Uh, wait for uh, microphone. When you say increased monsoon intensity, what exactly do you mean by that? Do you mean more rainfall? Do you mean wind shear? What, what exactly what, what, is? I mean rainfall. Uh, because the, uh, it's quite the confusion. No, 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 you, use the microphone, use the microphone. You. <coughs> when we see the data eating signals, we can find that uh, very different uh, signals of rainfall over the last part of the East Asia, particularly from the South Asia, uh, China to North China. But if you look at the records from the K, you can see very similar uh, pattern between South China and uh, Middle, Middle, Middle China. So uh, I think that Delta 18 represents the proportional a ratio of summer monsoon rainfall amount to yearly rainfall amount. This is actually it represents. So here I mean the summer monsoon intensity not always precluded the possibility of the winds from the low latitude to high. High latitude. Are there enough dates where you can look at the growth rates and do those back up, like uh, the intensity having to do with local rainfall? Oh, too fast. I can't capture your ideas. <laughs> Excuse me, my English is poor. Please so, <laughs> speak slowly. <laughs> Are there growth rate changes? Oh, no, no, no. I have no, other, uh, no further evidence to support my explanations. <laughs> mm. 
I didn't find any correlations between annual school, uh, growth rate between uh, and uh, data holding signal. But particularly, uh, when we investigated the <coughs> two signal from the annual banded sequence, we didn't find its close relation. In contrast, we find the upside signal between the growth rate and uh, isotopic signals. 